Hi there. Welcome to the how to create a virtual field trip video. Um, I wanted to create this video somewhere cool because then I can show you examples of what I'm talking about. There's a couple easy steps that will really help you out when you're creating these virtual field trips. And I'll go through them in this video. So I hope you enjoy it and get excited to not only see this video but also get to see Orlando, Florida. Now there's a few things that will really help you out when you're making these videos. Um, the first thing is having a tripod. Now this isn't totally necessary um, because you can kind of make uh, makeshift tripods by setting your camera on certain things and creating some way to stabilize your camera. But having a very stable camera is super important. Having a shaky hand image just gives people a headache and basically it'll turn them off to the video right away, not making them want to watch it. Um, the second thing, besides a tripod or something, some way to stabilize your camera, is having an actual video camera does help a lot. Um, usually your phones or, you know, that, it's just going to be a little bit harder to make it, but it's totally possible and because that's the most accessible recording device, that's awesome. So if you pull out your phone, um, just switch it to the camera mode. But what I want you to do is I don't want you to zoom in and out, especially if you're using your phones. If you're using your phones, stabilize your elbow and very slowly you can make the panning shots. Because there's two kinds of shots that I'm going to want you to include in these virtual field trips. The first is going to be the informative shot. So where there's actually someone talking or doing something or, you know, it's pretty much the content. Then you're going to want the B-roll shots. And the B-roll shots are just the panning shots, like this one. And if you do decide to walk with your camera, I wouldn't suggest shaking it around because as you can see, it's really kind of distracting. So make sure you're holding your elbow straight. Even if you have a tripod, sometimes I like to hold the tripod so that it, it extends your hand, it extends what you're doing. And try not to fall because that will just be ridiculous and you might wreck your camera. So if you are walking around with your camera, having a close up, even though I wouldn't suggest ever doing that, I would say to make sure you're not shaking it around, you have it out far and you're just very steadily walking. Don't just be making up stuff while you're there you know, talking about some artist or, you know, some historian that said this and that when it actually didn't happen. Just pull up your phone. You can even be holding it, looking at it, or write it on your hand um, just to make sure our historical events and our geological locations and our cultural information is pretty much solid. So pull up the information, look at it on the phone, Look at it, add it on your device or research it ahead of time to plan for these videos so that we have awesome videos that are not only cool, but also educational. So one important thing is to speak up, speak loudly, make the material you're covering heard by others, present to the camera, but don't just look at some person you're talking to, look at the camera like that's the person you're talking to. Keep things moving, keep things interesting, and get excited. So, keeping these videos short, I think is going to be a very important thing. Um, having them pace pretty quickly. You don't want to just talk for 10 minutes in one location. Move around. Go to even just different 90 degree spots to make it a little more interesting when you're editing it together. Take your B-roll, so the film or the video that you took of just the different locations and put that in between the different content clips. So, that just gives your mind a little break and it also intri brings intrigue to it. Uh, I really am excited to see all the different styles of videos and all the different locations. So go to your backyard, what 
backyard is representing is just what you know. What historical things have happened near you? What geological unique places are there? What place do you love? Is it a park? Is there this beautiful park that you would just love to share with others that you go to all the time? Go out. Do it. Take a video of it. It could be even 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. Just talk about why you like it, what's the aesthetic value of it, um, and even what's the cultural uniqueness to it, and then share it and let others benefit from it. Um, that's what we're trying to do here with this virtual field trip. We're trying to build this repository of videos that are free and open to share with one another and post them as Creative Commons license in YouTube, which is a very important thing to make sure you're doing on these videos. So one thing is to make sure that you're thinking about the lighting. As you can see, this side of my face is darker than this side of my face. Really consider that. It's awesome to record out, outdoors, being in better lighting so that you can see more of the person you're recording. It makes things more interesting. So when you're recording these virtual field trip videos, make sure that you are having an interesting background. Just a plain white wall is not that interesting. Make sure that it's something unique, whether it's just even a simple painting or it's something that's moving. Creating a virtual field trip can be a really fun experience. Let's make sure we get our students involved. Let's make sure we get the community involved. Let's have these experiences technically be next generation OER, which is community and crowdsourced um, open educational resources. So, how do you do it? You basically, you have the location that your student's in that might be really unique, or the location that your school's in, and you can just assign it as an extra credit or a group project. And they can go out together and make these really unique videos. And then they can work on the editing programs that are so, um, useful and so or so relevant in today's educational society. So give your students that opportunity to go out and make these videos. Um, and if you want to do them, that's awesome. You know, I think that's a great way to make sure that the text is great and that um, the material is good. So have your students send you the videos before they post it online so that you can, you know, fact check what they're talking about. But having these resources created by the students going to really be a wonderful experience for them to learn about the areas, the geological, the cultural, the historical things that have happened near them. Um, and also it will give them a wonderful opportunity to kind of work on their presenting skills. It will give them this opportunity to work as a group or even as an individual who's adding something to the group of basically um, people that are going to be watching their videos and the community who is eventually going to benefit from it worldwide. So get your students out there, help them create this next generation of OER and make sure that they make it interesting, make it unique, make it mind-blowing and have them get creative with it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing what you can come up with for these virtual field trips. Have the wonder most wonderful day. Thank you.